so the concept of coding so have you uh, uh, this this is i think a page of park and you can see so being a student have you ever done uh, th these things in your book like marking pasting writing with colors usually girls love to do this yes ma'am yes ma'am is writing okay yes uh, memo versus field notes we will discuss all those all all these topics are coming uh, just be patient for i think 30 minutes you will come to know and then we'll again have a question session answer uh, round question question answer session then you can i'll answer all all those things so uh, you must have experienced this and uh, so uh, before we start with the actual coding let's play a simple game so just see this take a notebook and write down the names of animals you see in this picture If not, then these are the names. So you can write the rough name, not all the names are not necessary. You can take a picture of it also with your mobile if you don't want to write. And then the next question is, now you have to group these animal according to any of your chosen criteria. And now type in the chat box. Once you have made group based on any criteria. Ma'am, please, can we see the previous screen? Uh, because I have not taken the photograph. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Birds, animals, number of legs, wild and pet animal, birds and mammal. Land versus water, wild and domestic, Buddha writing amphibian land water, <coughs> Minalini birds, carnivore versus herbivore, herbivore carnivores. Yes. So all of you are right because everyone has got a different criteria. Amphibian, reptile, birds, mammals, flying, land. So yes, like we have just, uh, I mean, I'm not saying the other categories are wrong. All the categories are right because you have got some criteria in your mind. Okay, Parul is writing street and pet. So uh, like these were the main broad category like herbivore, carnivore and omnivore. And again, can you appreciate like, no, if now the, uh, sorry. Uh, so now the second question was you have to arrange the name of animal as per their dietary habit. So this is the second type. So here in this case, we have given you carnivore, herbivore, and omnivore. So now you have to put the, those animals into these categories only, okay? So the initial question, which I have shown here, here it was your choice to take any criteria. But in this case, you have to classify it on the basis of their dietary habits. So now can you tell me which is the inductive and which is deductive? especially to the people who uh, could not understand the concept of inductive and deductive in the day one, day one class, or maybe day two. First was inductive and deductive. Yes, so, so is it clear? Now I hope it will be clear to you that if you have got a criteria beforehand, then we call it as a deductive. And if you... If you leave that criteria to the researcher, so researcher is free to decide which type of criteria he or she wants to use with the same data set, with the same data, then that is a inductive. So yes, very good. First was inductive and the second was deductive. So now look at these words. So what is this? Annoyed. See them clear, carefully because again, there is an activity. What is this? Upset, lost, vibrant, creative, bitter, glad, again vibrant, motivated. 
So have you seen or written these words? So if you have to now, I said three or dynamic, confident, and furious. Okay, so these many words are there. Now arrange these two in positive and negative emotions. So which type of method I am using? Inductive or deductive? Deductive. Deductive, ma'am. Deductive. Because I have already given you. If I have left this choice to you, then it would have been inductive. And based on that, you could have taken any other criteria. But I did not try that because we tried that with the first example. So here I've tried a deductive approach. Now see this. There's a, can someone read the news uh, heading? Oh, yes. Ashwini is writing negative is lost, bitter, furious, annoyed. Yes, you are right. So anyone? Manisha, can you read this? Yes, sir. Women give free shots to people at US airport after being denied to carry alcohol. Okay. So can you frame the news looking at the headline? This was a headline. What would, what must have happened? They must be frustrated when they didn't, when they could not carry the alcohol. Yes. So, but, but, but in that, uh, but they took it as a, they didn't, uh, so it, you can just read this again, because since you have read the headline. A viral video showed women offering free shots to passengers at a U.S. airport after security personnel stopped them from carrying large bottles of alcohol due to the 100 milliliter rule that's been in place for years. Security officials chuckled as the Miami-bound woman offered shots to passengers. I am disappointed. I wasn't there to participate. A social media user commented. Okay. So this, so the, uh, I'll discuss why we are showing these to you. Okay. Now the second one. Yes, some other person may, Ashwini, can you, because I can see your response. That's why I'm asking you. Can you? Uh, Five-year-old Mo uh, Motorola phone saved a man's life by stopping a bullet from penetrating his skin during an armed robbery in Brazil. The doctors who treated the phone's owner said the man only had a small bruise near his hip and was quickly discharged. He also shared pictures of the damaged Moto G5, which had a Hulk-themed phone cover. So can you think of any headline? And this question is for all of you. So can you frame any headline looking at this news? And all of you, please type in the chat box. What will you frame if you read this? Like this has come to you and you are the editor of that uh, maybe bulletin and you have to decide for the headline. So phone saves man life, Hulk saves man, phone rescues man, old phone saved a life. Okay, anything, anything, uh, Hulk framed Motorella saved man's from bullet. Man gets lucky during an armed robbery in Brazil. Okay, something different. Motorola the rescuer. Motorola became hero and saved life. So a lot of, lot of interesting uh, headline. Motor, mobile phone may be a bulletproof. Okay, good one. So yes, so all the articles, all the titles are very good. And why we are asking this because like whenever you have to suggest a title for your manuscript, you always look for some central theme or some metaphor which is appearing in your article in by the statement which the participants gave. Like that, uh, you know, this... Uh, ballet dance and you know ringing bell example you must have seen they have, they have uh, you know framed a very catchy uh, title so you will see that all qualitative research generally the title is very catchy and they use either some metaphor or some participant uh, response or verbatim in the title hulk the savior personal mobile to the rescue so here they have framed a simple title like 
Motorola phone stops bullet saves man life during armed robbery. So it was not very uh, like something unique which you people are suggesting. So again, I think I have told the purpose of news headline. So let's uh, go ahead. So now qualitative data analysis. So qualitative data analysis, you uh, must have realized by this time after making the transcript that here the words are very important. So select, I mean, the words which you are writing, the feeling which you are conveying, process wise, it is similar. That means you have to go to the person, you have to ask for their responses. But again, the concept and the approach. So the qualitative approach towards the data analysis is an entirely different thing. So there are basically four types of qualitative data analysis approach. We'll do this uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So there is a content analysis, there is a thematic analysis, there is a textual analysis, and there is a discourse analysis. So most of the time we perform thematic analysis because we come up with the themes after merging the category. So we call it as a thematic analysis. Content analysis is also very interesting where we do the analysis of already published content. In that case, your time of you know taking the interview, making the transcript, that is saved. So it is a bit a quick in a quick method of doing a qualitative research. Now there are tools for qualitative coding. You can do coding by hand. And today we'll show you how you can do a manual coding because it is recommended that once you start with uh, coding with a software, you should do at least few coding on, uh, on a, by hand on hard paper, on hard copy. So if you are doing your qualitative research for the first time, please take a printout of at least first two to three transcript and read those transcript two, twice or thrice and then start doing the manual coding. And once you do the manual coding, you are comfortable with the manual coding, then you start coding over the QDA manner or any other software which you are already using. Uh, because there is a I mean, there are many people who are using NVivo or uh, you know Atlas TI. We have got both the software, uh, but again for uh, training purpose, since QDA manner is free, that's why we recommend using QDA manner if you have not purchased any. And then uh, you can do the coding with word processor. Word processor means that word document. So you can use the coding, coding in that word format, which you have made for the transcript. You can do the coding on that also. Or again, that you can do the coding with the software. So now solve this problem. What is 2 plus 2? Answer of this 2 plus 2? 4. Yes. All of you, please write, all of you. But for a qualitative researcher, the answer could be, for a qualitative research, the answer could be 22 also. It depends how he's taking two plus two. Now give your interpretation in this case, in word or few words. One of you can read this, Devayan. Can you read this, this verbatim? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I'm audible, right? Ma yes, you are. Okay, ma'am. The medicine cost rupees thousand per day. And additionally, I had to be taken to the doctor. It was very difficult for my husband as he is a daily wage worker and the expenses were very high. Each day I was given a drip and returned home late, late in the evening. My, ch my children used to stay hungry all the day. So there is a so now give your interpretation. Yes. So all of you, please write. If you have to explain these verbatim in few words or in maybe one sentence or few in a phrase, what will you write? Or even if you want to write word one keyword. So Surender is writing out of pocket expenditure, plight of a sick daily wage worker. Yes, poverty. Precarious plight. Very good. 
poverty veena is writing dilemma of sickness and poverty that is also very good anuradha any any few more responses low social economic status shivangi is writing okay so uh, there is a sub subjectivity because uh, poverty and illness so you will see that all of you are differing in the in one words that means you can see that there is a diverse thinking process which is going on although if you converge them they'll come to one central idea but while coding because code is generally it it is few words or one word so you have seen that there are so many codes which have appeared here we will understand what a code is for beginners you might i have not introduced the term code yet but code is basically a word or a phrase which express the meaning of that underlying sentence so in qualitative data analysis we start with making codes and then uh, we merge those codes to make a category we merge those categories to form a theme and if possible not in all case if you take a central theme it can be take uh, taken in the form of a theory but in all cases it is not essential that a qualitative uh, analysis it is not mandatory that you should have all the four thing in your analysis even there are cases when you will see that people code is mandatory <laughs> for all the analysis but there are many researcher who make directly theme out of the codes there are people who make categories and there are people who who leave one of the few terms here so it is not always essential that all the four terms should be there in a qualitative uh, research but codes are mandatory for all the cases codes are the beginning block now i have i am repeatedly using this word code and coding so now what is this coding so basically coding is a process of reducing the qualitative data because you know there are a lot of paragraph you will uh, come to know when you import your own transcript so there are basically 14 transcript so it is a very rich words and if you convey any anything based on that words and if you have not framed your conveyance in a well drafted manner then you cannot communicate well what do you want to convey so when you reduce the data when you reduce the huge data and the data what is a qualitative data the qualitative data is in the form of words so when you reduce that data and that process of reducing that data is known as the coding but it should be without losing its money meaning what happens that if you we will see in the descriptive coding if you put one word for entire paragraph then it loses its meaning so that words or that sentence or that verbatim should not lose its meaning that should be your aim while you are doing the coding that's why you should capture all those significant ideas when you are doing the coding process so code is a word or a short phrase it can be a single word or it can be a group of few words which we call as a phrase which captures the essence of that verbatim for which you are putting the code and basically it is the researcher generated so that's why in the qualitative analysis the researcher should also tell them about themselves what is their belief about that particular research question because the researcher may be biased regarding any research topic also like we will see in the later slides like like if my son or my uh, you know child is suffering from autism then i have my own perception and belief system regarding autism and if i will be doing anything any research on autism i should be telling this to the reader that in my home there is a child who is suffering from autism so that gives a perspective to the reader also and that's how the in these days it is often often recommended that you should express your uh, biases also what are your biases because all the individual here nothing is objective unlike quantitative what is the uh, what is the, the beauty of quantitative is that it is very objective i am doing or my colleague dr shamshad is doing or my resident is doing everyone will yield the same uh, level 
same result. But qualitative, you have seen that there will be difference if different people are involved in data analysis. That's why we recommend the, the data analyzing or doing the coding process in a collaborative manner. Maybe you, if you have more than one coder, then also it is very good to have more than one coder. So if there are two researchers and both of the researchers are having their own code book, it is always desirable. So since it is a researcher generated interpretation, researchers should express their biases. And basically by doing the coding, we are attributing or we are giving meaning to the data. And then we are detecting some pattern and some theme, which we have discussed that we make category out of clubbing that codes and maybe after that we make a theme and then we make a theory. So this is the coding process. So Harvey was an ethnographer and he always used to say that, you know, we always say in the qualitative data analysis, we emphasize on the word emerge. We say that, you know, the theme emerged, the code emerged, the category emerged. But he said that, you know, by emerge, this is a misnomer because this is not something which has emerged suddenly. You have to put a lot of effort. That's why he said that we should not expect our transcript to be like a tal, that when we would ring out all and expect the codes to fall all over the floor like water. When we ring the tall, you know, the water flows on the floor, but the theme and the qualitative data is not like that, that you will just ring your data and you will get the meaning. So you should be very cautious when you are doing the analysis that you have a lot of thinking process goes. It is not something which is very, uh, it, it is not very manual. A lot of thinking process goes and it, 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 you have to instill a lot of thought process if you are doing the qualitative coding. So now, what do you mean by significant idea? So basically any verbatim or any sentence which you think that it is telling you something about the research question because you have started your project for a research question, you have that and you have done a thorough literature search. So you have something in your mind. So you should always start the coding process with keeping your research question in mind because then only you will be able to do the coding. Now, the process of coding helps us in understanding a given phenomena B because the coding, when you do the coding, it tells you about the phenomena and it helps in development of a construct like maybe self-esteem, aging. So it helps in development of a construct and it helps in developing a new theory or filling the gap in the existing theory, which we have seen that you know, we do the qualitative research not only to develop a new theory, rather we fill the gap in the existing theory also. So the, a very important question arises that which method of coding shall I use? Still, I have not talked about the various methods of coding, but with this question, there is one certainty that there are more than one methods of coding. So that depends on your research question, like which method of coding should you use? So now the type of research question in qualitative research, it can be an ontological research question. We have talked about that, or it can have an epistemological research question. So ontological research question that intend to capture the participant reality. And we have read about the single reality, multiple reality, and the changing reality. Whereas the epistemological stance, it intends to understand the different phenomena where we have seen that, you know, based on these two, we call it as a research paradigm. Now we call, always co call this coding process as researcher lenses, filters, and angles. Now think about a researcher eye and that eye, that, that eye, those eyes act like a camera which has got a lens, which has got a filter, and which has got a lenses. That's why through that eyes, when you see something, you through that lenses, you can zoom in on few particular verbatim, you can zoom out using that filter. So filter are basically the researcher own interpretation. 
by which he filters few things out and he filters the important things in and using that angle angle is in relation to the various perspective so that angle works when you see the things with a different angle or with a different perspective so i will show this with this example so can someone read this this uh, this excerpt can someone maybe arun funhera ari funhera yes ma'am am i audible ma'am uh, yes you are uh example there is just no place in this country for illegal immigrants round them up and send those criminals back to where they come from so context of this was that uh, one person was doing a study on immigrants okay so it is the regarding the immigrants so now there are three types of coda so if uh, i am a coda where i am you know guided by a grounded theory belief then i'll focus that there is no place so i'll focus on this word that there is no place so if that is there it is using a grounded theory approach if i am someone like who believes in immigration issue and who is a ethnographer then i will see it as a you know there is a lot of immigration issue Smart and i'll focus more on screen. the okay so i'll focus more on the immigration issue but if i am a critical race theorist because there is another type of qualitative researcher who is a critical race theorist in that case why it is turning black just a second yes so this uh, third person who is a critical race theorist he believes that it is a case of xenophobia because by this sentence that round them up and send those criminals back to where they come from so now you can see the researcher perspective there are three types of researcher with three three background and they are coding this verbatim in three different form so is it clear to you regarding what is this coding lenses filters and angles am i making myself clear to all of you okay so nilima is writing yes thank you so the main thing is that you have to keep your biases you should try to keep i i'm not saying that you will always be able to do that because we have our own biases but try to keep yourself unbiased during the code coding process because that will help you in coming up with a very neutral theme now again explaining the coding and carry forward that so one metaphor so arifun hera is writing why can't the three codes derive be grounded actually grounded because they believe their belief system is different in all these three cases in one case they are saying that there is no place so that is more of a grounded theory because they are coming up with theory but that critical race theorist he is saying that it is more of a xenophobia so xenophobia was not written in the interpretation nowhere but if you if you believe in the uh, that critical race theory this thing then you you will have this interpretation that it was a xenophobia so data was not uh, saying that you know it was the interpretation it was it was it was uh, never mentioned that it is related to xenophobia but that researcher said that it is xenophobia so that's why it is the researcher perspective okay data is not saying this so when data is not saying that and you are interpreting it based on own biases and that you must have experienced in your day to day activity also that you have not said something to someone with some a particular intent but but that person took it very seriously because he had or she had some preconceived notion so because of that i think it happens with us in day to day life also you will realize that you did not say with that intent but you know that the other person took it wrongly so what is that that is basically coming up with your personal biases in somebody else assessment 
and we all are there i mean no one is perfect we all are there with the biases and that biases will come in your data analysis if you go you know a little bit deep into the data so there is a metaphor for this coding purposes this coding uh, to define coding that coding generates the bones of your analysis so coding or the codes are the small frag or the fragment of bones or the bones and integration of those bones will assemble into a working skeleton when you integrate those codes then it makes a working skeleton and then you do the write up so this is one metaphor to define the coding process again we say this metaphor also that the quantitative analysis calculates the mean while the qualitative analysis calculates the meaning this is also very important and we have said this earlier also so now about the coding and analysis do you think that coding and analysis is uh, synonymous if yes then please change your opinion because coding and analysis is not synonymous coding is just the initial process of data analysis but the whole data analysis is much more than the coding process and this coding is cyclical in nature one of the participants they have written the cyclical so what do we mean by cyclical that you we will see this that there are various steps for coding cycle roughly we will discuss the first cycle of coding in this session but there are basically two cycles of coding first cycle of coding and second cycle of coding so in first cycle of coding we suggest that whatever is coming to your mind start coding that don't think too much that is a first cycle coding and when you come again to that uh, transcript twice then you can refine and rearrange your codes so that is basically the second cycle coding so in the first cycle coding you should do it whatever is coming to your mind and you should not wait in the selection or you know, searching the words or new things so and the codes and categories they are also two separate entity and we have learned that that we have got code we make category out of um, that code when we merge the category we make theme and out of that theme that the prominent theme we take it as a theory but again to reiterate it is not essential that all qualitative research proposal should have all the four components no there are researcher who mention only code and then they make theme there are researcher who make code and category there is no mentioning of theme and there are people who mention all the four levels of this process now there are some necessary personal attribute for coding so a qualitative researcher should be logical and critical thinker because again that logic and critical thinking is coming all the time when you are doing the coding there should be perseverance because you must have realized uh, yesterday that you know making a transcript is not a easy task and so is said for the so we can see say for the coding process also you start coding the thing and then you, there will be some interruptions because all of you all of us are working we cannot sit and do the coding the only the coding process you have to do a lot of other task accomplish the other day to day activity so you tend to leave it and then there will be a prolonged gap in your coding process like i start uh, doing the coding on monday and then i'm stuck up with my some work and then i can i i just stop doing the coding for 3 4 5 days then again no i i lost it i i get i get lost i got lost i'm not sure whether i left that process and that whole thinking got disturbed so it gets disturbed so that's how you should be perseverant that every day at least you should be spending some time with that data so that the thinking process is continued and you you don't have to start again from the scratch and then you should be flexible because again in the second cycle coding you will be re you will be changing the names of your code so if you are flexible then only you will be thinking that no i think i in the first cycle i i i gave it with this name but i think that this is more appropriate so you should be flexible in nature you should be creative because qualitative is all about creation and thinking you should be rigorously rigorously ethical why that because you should not sideline the opinion of the person with whom you don't agree because it is you who will 
bring those issues also with the agreement or disagreement so even if you don't agree with someone with your personal due to your personal biases you should not be sidelining that you no know, interview or that verbatim so that is uh, that we mean by the rigorously ethical you should give all the perspective try to give all the perspective and then you should have extensive vocabulary because that is very essential many a time you you will have to look for the thesaurus for the synonym for for those things uh, while you are doing the coding process to refine your language so it should you should be having even if you don't have you can take the help of the dictionary to develop an extensive vocabulary so these are the six attributes uh, they are the necessary personal attributes for coding process now uh, the codes and themes are different so we have talked about that so codes and themes are different so code is a process and in the coding we have read that it is a so you take the example of a room okay so if you decorate a room you have a room in which there is a sofa there is a lamp there is a wall hanging so you try decorating a room and that each small component is a code so you try to arrange those codes but again you step back move few things see the setting and then try a serious organization so those are the codes and the outcome which appears after you have placed all those items in your way that is the like after you have made the categorization or after you have done an analytical reflection that is the theme so did you get the difference between a code and a theme or should i repeat it am i making sense to all of you yes ma'am okay thank you in between i need to ask because today there, there is a less of activity so you should not be sleeping because it's a post lunch so that's why i'll be waking you up in between so the coding is uh, you have to start uh, ideally i'm talking of ideas that at least you should start coding when you have your first or second two transcript with you so start uh, coding to collect and format your data it, sh it should not be done after all your field work gets completed so usually we also try at least you can code the things which you have listened maybe it is not possible if it is not possible to draft the transcript you can start having some broader codes when you take the interview also and again we have said that they it, it is not necessary that it should be very accurate and please do not rely on memory do not rely at all especially for analytical memo whenever something comes to your mind just start writing that you can you can keep that you can record that over phone you can uh, start you can message to someone you can use a note uh, pad in your phone or in a whatever is the whatever way it is a very innovative way everyone has their own way of recording that memo but when you are re reading the transcript when you are doing the analysis if something comes to your mind even before that you should uh, write and do not rely on memory and uh, go th i mean you should get your thoughts documented however fleeting it is now there are two types of coding there is a lumping and there is a splitting now what do you mean by the lumping coding lumping coding another name of a lumping coding is the macro coding we will see the example so in this case we replace a big paragraph by a short word or a phrase whereas in splitting it is in the micro coding we break the verbatim into small pieces small coda content that is the splitting to see that yes so anyone can can anyone read this purnima can you read this yes ma'am i'll read it i'm not telling you do this to depress you or scare you but it was a reality for me i thought i was so ready for this population because i had thought of the groups of kids but this is such a unique situation the inner city school no i should take that back it's not as much of a unique situation anymore there are more and more schools that are running into inner city schools i'm sorry 
I really had to learn about the kids. I had to learn the language, hand signals, what music allowed, what t-shirts they could wear on certain days and not on other days. There was such a lot to learn that I had never even thought of, thought okay. about. Thank you. Thank you, Purnima. Mm -hmm. If I have to do a lumper coding, lumper coding means this whole paragraph, I'll replace it either with one word or with few words. So now the lumper coding, which I did, it is it was a lot to learn. And these references we have taken from Saldana and we have shared the soft copy of the book with you people. So this is a lumper coding where you see that with this whole paragraph, okay, yes, Arifun Hara is right, inner city school experience, that is also correct. So again, it is subjective, you might be coding something else, I may be coding some other way. So like I have learned that, I have written that, that uh, there is a lot to learn, which I, I, I never thought of, okay. Or, and it can be an inner city school experience, which is a type of lumper coding, because I am uh, doing replacing the whole paragraph with one word or phrase. Now, what, what is the disadvantage of this such type of coding? Because then you will be losing the meaning. In, in between also, there are many things which carries meaning. So if you do practice such type of coding, you will lose essence and you will lose meaning. Now there is another type which is known as the splitting coding. So since uh, you know already this paragraph, I have used the same paragraph. So now the same, this thing, I'm not telling you to do this to depress you or scare you, but it was a reality for me. So now I have uh, this, I have done this as a reality, this yellow one, the first sentence. I thought it, I was so ready for this population because I thought I had thought of the groups of kids. So I have coded this like, I thought I was ready. Now the third thing, but this is such a unique situation of the inner city school. So I have just written inner uh, situation, which uh, Hussein Arifun Hara is also uh, written, unique uh, situation or the inner city school experience. No, I should take that back. It, uh, it's not as much of a unique situation. There are more and more schools that are running into the inner city school. So more inner city schools. Then again, the last three sentences, I have written that I had to learn a lot because I had to learn language, gang signals, music, etc. So I had to learn a lot. So you can see that in one paragraph, I had, I have coded it in the four or five codes. So this is a type of splitting, micro coding. Whereas in the first case, it was a macro or a lumper or coding. Okay. Now, what is the problem with this? So we have talked about the problem of this lumper coding that you may lose the meaning and the essence. What is the problem with this splitting coding? So the problem with splitting type of coding will be that there will be too many codes because there is a, there are huge paragraph and if the verbatim is very rich, if the transcript is very rich, then there will be code proliferation. There will be too many codes. So how to tackle that problem? Because we don't want it to be a lumper coding, we don't want to be a splitting either. So you have to come in between. So just to how to reduce the code, how to deal with this problem of code proliferation. So you should quote only the most essential part of the data corpus that and which is related to your research question. The second is the what the Saldana suggests that you should have minimum of 50 and maximum of 300 codes. The total number of codes should not exceed beyond 300. That is recommended. Then you, uh, you should select those codes repeatedly. And then you should subsume the smaller codes into the broader codes. One thing which you can, which you should be doing, which we always advocate, that is to write an analytical memo. We will show you how to write uh, analytical memo and what is analytical memo and how it is different from the field notes. We have uh, given the response in the chat box also, but we will, okay. So, and uh, if not, then we will discuss it uh, in the subsequent session, uh, slides. And then repeat the coding cycle. If you repeat the coding cycle, then also you will be reducing the number of codes because you will think, you will again, uh, you will try to code uh, and use the same code time and again for that code. 
So if you repeat your coding cycle, definitely the number of code will reduce because now it will strike you. This was the same as the previous one. So I can have the same name of codes for both these two. So that is one very good way. If you keep repeating your coding, definitely the number of codes gets reduced. And always keep research question in front of your eyes. You can type, you can put a broad paste, uh, I mean, type your research question and put it in front of you. That what is your research question? So you should, you should focus entirely on your research question which, uh, with which you have started this research. Now we will talk of most used coding method. There are 29 types of coding methods, but we are discussing here only seven types. And those are the most commonly used coding methods. If you want to know about the other coding methods, you can refer to that book. But for beginners, uh, maybe this level one and level two, I think these seven types of coding methods are fair enough. You don't need to go beyond it. So the first is attribute coding. I'm just enumerating it and then we will discuss it one by one. So the first type of coding is the attribute coding. Second type is the descriptive coding, emotion coding, in vivo coding. You have got magnitude coding, narrative coding, and process coding. There is one more type of coding, which is the metaphor coding, which we have not included here. That is also very important and we will discuss what is that. So first is the attribute coding. Now, what is attribute coding? So basically you have got that socio-demographic characteristics. Like you know that whenever you read any verbatim in the bracket, it reads that it is it was a female, 27 year old nurse working, whatever. So that attribute is mentioned in the bracket. So when you are coding about the research site or participant, socio-demographic characteristics or material, it is known as the attribute coding, like urban, rural, age, gender, qualification, designation, etc. So the social demographic characteristics is the attribute coding. Okay. Now, second type of coding is the, uh, again, before that, this attribute coding, it is again setting context to codes and it is again the basic descriptive. I think this is the same which we have discussed. Example can be like Barry, 18 year old in the 12th grade and heterosexual lower middle all those things can be there. This is describing a person's attribute. That's why this is the attribute coding. The second type of coding is the descriptive coding. So now this, what is this descriptive coding? So this descriptive coding, this assign label to data to summarize in a word or short phrase. Mostly it is in the form of a noun. So descriptive coding is a type of lumper coding because here you again describe the whole paragraph with a noun or with a one or few words. Again, the problem with this descriptive coding is that it loss, uh, there is some loss of data, but you can have this if there is a long paragraph and it is conveying. And you, if you think that it is possible to replace that paragraph with few, with few words, you can do, you should do a descriptive coding also. So your coding methods should have a mix of methods whatever process is which you are doing and you should mention in methodology what type of coding methods you have used like you will see many people they write the only the open axial and the selective coding but if you are not using a grounded theory framework then you can use such words like you did a descriptive coding or you did a en vivo coding or emotional coding or magnitude coding in your data like uh, you can have a hospital house injections that is just to show few words so now a few example of descriptive coding so this is the same paragraph my son barry went oh no this is another paragraph can uh, someone read this for me anuradha can can you hear me anuradha yeah 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 ma'am uh, the whole paragraph yes okay Example of descriptive coding. My son Barry went through a really tough time about, uh, probably started the end of fifth grade and went into the sixth grade. When he was growing up young in the school, he was a people of people pleaser and his teacher loved him to death. Two boys in particular that he chose to try to emulate wouldn't were not very good for him. They were very critical of him. They put him down all the time 
and he kind of just took that and really kind of internalized it i think for a long time in the time period in the fifth grade early sixth grade they really just kind of shunned him altogether so his network as he knew it it was gone thank you anuradha so with the this descriptive coding if i have to do a descriptive coding then i will and this is just one way i am showing it is not necessary that this is the answer you know that in qualitative research there is no right or wrong everybody has their own criteria their own thinking process so i have taken this example from saldana even i am not used my criteria so this is all uh, yes school bullying are if you is right so the first i have written like maybe student teacher relationship and the second i have just written like bad role models but again you can have this school bullying also for overall uh, this paragraph as a example of descriptive coding now the third is the emotional coding so emotional coding is you have emotions in any paragraph because you are studying human behavior you are studying their perception so obviously human emotions will be there the emotions are generally what are the emotions they are in the form of happiness sadness maybe shame fear excitement so all those are the emotions so when you are coding the participant sentiments feeling reactions excitements those are the emotional coding and like hopelessness anxiety denial so all those you have seen that positive negative emotions you just did the exercise so that was a example of emotional coding so what coding methods we did first we did the attribute coding i'll just summarize attribute coding is regarding when we write regarding the socio demographic characteristics that is the attribute coding the second type of coding we did the descriptive coding descriptive coding when we replace it is a type of lumper coding so when we replace the entire uh, paragraph with one or few words or with one or two quotes we call it as a descriptive coding it is also it should be done in your data set because if there is a huge data set it is not always uh, possible to do a splitter coding third type of coding method is the emotional coding when you code the emotional moments of the participant uh, that like fear hopelessness or shame or you know sadness happiness then we call it as a emotional coding so emotional coding it, emotional coding label the emotions experienced by the participants or recalled by the participants and it 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 it, it may be inferred by the researcher to about towards that participant so that's why we call it as just you have to justify your role also so your role like your what is the participants view point like are participants expressing hopelessness or you research a view point are we interpreting hopelessness like in the case of xenophobia there the researcher coding was like they he was interpreting it as a hopelessness so like one question is even if the participant emotion is not a part of my research question should i still code for it so in the initial process yes you should code for the beginners try to code everything use all the coding methods and code and then you can have include uh, then you see the length of the manuscript and at at appropriate maybe right now you are not thinking that it is a part but when you will see the other codes and maybe when the other codes emerge and you try to categorize them then maybe it it may you may have some uh, linkage it to the some other category in explaining something else so yes even if it is not a part of your research question you should code it initially it is advisable code everything whatever you think even if it is a code pro proliferation in the first cycle coding code try to do a splitting coding and maybe in the second and uh, repeated cycle you can reduce it but in the first instance don't remove or don't leave anything because that will lead to a loss of data okay and then the fourth type is the in vivo coding so in vivo as the name suggests you take part of the sentence and code it so in vivo can based on this in vivo coding you know that there is a software that software also codes 
that entire sentence. So it uses the in vivo coding. So it coding the participants own words. And then like uh, <coughs> people say that they denied treatment. There was no mercy for us. It was too expensive. So it was in the participants own words. So this is the same paragraph, which uh, I think Anuradha read. So it was like uh, my son Barry. So if I want to code it in the form of in vivo, in vivo coding is a type of splitting coding, which we have done. So like my son Barry went through a really tough time. So I have coded it as a tough time. When he was growing up in the school, he was a people pleaser. So I may uh, code it as a people pleaser, but two boys particular he chose to try to emulate would were not be very good of him. They were very critical and they were all the time putting him down. So I've coded, coded it like put him down and in the real time period, fifth grade, it has shunned him. So the, I have coded it like that. So this was the example of NVivo coding, which is a type of splitter coding. So NVivo coding is uh, helpful when you are in the early phase of analysis. So I said that everyone should practice this type of coding because this is the first and beginning cycle it, uh, coding process. So you should code, you are still uh, deciding what to code, you are not sure. So that's why you are coding everything. And we, we are figuring out what to name the codes. Many a times it is not possible to think for an alternative. So you just code the participant name, take few words from the participant name, participant not name, but the participants verbatim and make it a code. So if you are not in the, if you are just sitting and if you don't want to put so much of effort in the first cycle coding, you should use NVivo coding method. And most of the researcher, even Saldana, he also says that he uses the, uh, this NVivo coding in the first cycle coding method. Now the fifth type is the process coding. So we have done four type of coding, attribute coding, descriptive coding, emotional coding, and in vivo coding. Fifth type is the process coding. So whenever uh, some process is going on, what is process? Process means action. So some action is going on. It is usually in the form of gerunds, ing. So that is the action coding and always the word ing will be there, like walking, checking reports, helping, those things are there. So example of process coding, because I said that it is in the form of gerund, so you will add ing. So like in the first, in this case, my son Barry all uh, went through a really tough time about and probably it started at the end of fifth grade and went into sixth grade. So I have coded it like pleasing people. The second part, internalizing rejection because two boy in particular, he chose to try to emulate. They were very critical of him and he in a kind, he has internalized it. So it was a internalizing rejection and the last losing your network. So this is an example, which is the example of process coding. Yes, Ria, any query at this point? Ma'am, I was just wanting to know, like um, the same sentence, the same paragraph, you are coding in a different manner. So at the same time, during the same cycle, can we code the same sentence in two or more different types of coding methods? Usually, like, uh, we refrain, uh, just, this is just to example, this is just to show that in the same paragraph I have uh, shown. But what you can do, you can use a mixed approach of coding. Like in one uh, way, you can use this uh, process of uh, gerunds or pleasing people. Or in one way, you can have NVivo. But still, I, I would suggest that you try doing NVivo uh, coding first. But you can use this process coding also. Whenever some action is going on, if you, if you want to describe anything in the form of action, then you should use this coding. So it depends what okay, is... So, so during one cycle for one part of the paragraph, you will use yes. only one type of first. No. No, it is not necessary. It is your choice. It is entirely okay. your way of presentation. You can do process coding for a few paragraphs. Where there are more actions, you can do process coding. Where a pe person is very getting emotional, you can use emotional coding. Where you are not uh, able to actually, categorize yes, it, you can do in vivo coding. Yes, ma'am. Actually, that's what I was saying. Uh, like for one thing, we will do one type of coding only for one type of part of paragraph. If in very action type, then we will do 
process you can coding use more than mm-hmm. one way that's why it is called as the eclectic coding method okay ma'am okay okay ma'am okay thank you now after this process coding next is the magnitude coding so this magnitude coding is like quantitative research when you quantify your words so it is also known as the value coding and it is very important for descriptive qualitative research like we say uh, you must have uh, done many research using a likert scale like uh, highly highly disagree or disagree to somewhat extent or you know no disagreement at all so all those things shows the quantity or magnitude so like moderate severe high low positive negative extreme less extreme so if you are quantifying those if you are using those words as a quantification this type of coding is known as the magnitude coding so now you can see there is a comparison of three style of coding descriptive code and vivo code and process code so descriptive code like student teacher relationship bad role models which we have seen in vivo coding was like tough time people pleaser put him down shun team and process code is like pleasing people internalizing rejection losing your network so it is not different if you see the meaning they are just uh, more or less related to each other it is just how you because see actually you are not going to report these codes no manuscript has got a mention of these codes these are for your reference because ultimately you will report the category which you have like out of those many codes you make the category and you make theme and maybe if possible theory so codes like codes are huge in number you just report how many numbers of code you have generated whatever method of coding you are using you don't have to put it in the manuscript means method you have to write but code whether you are using ing or whether you are using a lumper or splitter that only method you have to write that exact code you don't need to mention that's why it, it is it is not uh, that important whether you are doing a process coding like you are uh, present, presenting it as a action or you are doing a magnitude coding or whatever you are doing so because codes you don't have to report a what code in the form of a table code nobody reports they just report the number of codes which they have clock made. settings set the current time and date first clock set cancel smart hub three items home so now how to decide what to code am i audible to all of you yes ma'am yes ma'am Well, there is there is some disturbance. Just give me give me two minutes. so uh, sorry so how to decide what to code so anything uh, which is related to your initial coding process which is related to your research question which is surprising you or it is the aha moment for you you think that no i should code this particular which attracts you which you put which puts your mood off any recurrent pattern through the transcript so all those things whichever you are reading and you think that should be coded there is no criteria rather whatever you feel it is up to the researcher wants to code he or she can code now how to decide what to label so you should label a text if it appears several time across transcript this labeling is regarding coding on coding only so you should label a text if it appears several time across transcript if it amazes you if interviewer specially said it's important or you read something similar in the previous literature or it is related to a theory or concept so these things definitely you should code so be- before you begin to code you can opt for either of these three approach we have done that 
you can start with the uh, this uh, deductive approach you have a preconceived concept or you can have inductive approach you remain open minded or there can be combination of your two that you have started with the deductive approach but while going through the uh, analysis you may add few more theme and now it is a combination of deductive and inductive so do not hesitate to code plenty of text in the first cycle that we have said thumb rule for initial coding just do it like this is the uh, nike logo just do it so don't think what is right and wrong in the first cycle code just do whatever is coming to your mind in the first instance as a researcher you have a total freedom in naming your codes there is no guideline about it and you can name your code even like something interesting we'll see later something like that and we were coding now this is a one activity for all of you can one uh, can someone read this maybe i can ask uh, bhavna can you hear me yes ma'am i can hear you can you read this yeah i wake up around 6 start my day with getting kids ready getting kids to ready for school then gym to save my time i had my breakfast in the kitchen i always make tea and eat omelets and banana while catching up on the emails on my phone thank you bhavna welcome so can you can you uh, extract one or more quotes from this paragraph please write in the chat box preparing my kids for school busy parent my routine saving time yes daily morning struggle bhavna is writing working parent catching up surender is writing veena multitasking my parent husain working mom's routine Yes, uh, two participants have raised hand. May I have your question before I go ahead? Latika, I think uh, you raised hand. Was it by mistake, or you want to ask something? No, I think. there was one more hand maybe that was by mistake okay so yes i uh, getting ready catching up making food okay by mistake that's okay i thought maybe you have some query so uh, the, the you all all of you are right it was uh, like a few it it this like getting ready kid, uh, uh, get, kids get ready saving time morning routine my routine you know all all these things are correct so now there are two most co common type of coding processes so again we have done this several times deductive and inductive so deductive coding just to exemplify this deductive coding it is good for descriptive research or for program evaluation research and in such research we have got prior ideas about the major themes or codes based on the research question and the researcher assign codes to the text of an expert as per prior set framework that's why it is called as the top down approach like in this case you can see there is a code 1 2 3 and 4 so we have got prior decided and then we start putting our codes into this pre decided codes and we find excerpts in the transcribed file that fit to the codes so this is example of deductive coding in that inductive coding we start with the data and we find codes from the transcribed file and that then we name it as 1 2 3 and 4 it is good for the exploratory research like grounded theory and we don't have any prior idea if we start with such inductive coding process and researcher allows themes or code to emerge from the data that's why it is called as the ground up approach but in practical uh, thing many a time we do as a hybrid thing when you form a questionnaire 
obviously you define your major research question like in uh, the exercise also which was regarding the perception of students of conventional teaching there were few research questions so those research question may act as a major category or code for you people and you start putting your codes into that but once you go through the data more and more you may have a emerging emergence of a new code or new category so many a times most of the time we use a hybrid mode because we have something preset in our mind based on the literature review we start putting the data into that but during the course of analysis we add to that and we may change it so it is a combination of both the deductive and inductive approach but you may choose to report one which was the predominant one so you may choose to report if your predominant one was a deductive you can mention about the deductive and if your predominant approach was inductive then you can mention about the inductive now steps of coding in hybrid approach is that again i have said this i just to reiterate you should create the initial codes read through the transcript decide what to code and then <coughs> add new codes if it emerges from the transcript group those codes into categories and theme evaluate and revise and write the narrative now again activity for you people now you have to create some initial code from the following research question what mode first research question is it is regarding the vaccine uh, assessment i mean perception of people regarding vaccine hesitancy so what motivated you for taking the vaccine what did you find not hesitancy rather it is the behavior towards vaccination so what motivated you for taking the covid vaccine you have to create initial code what did you find frustrating in the process of vaccination and how had you reacted on that based on these research question all of you please frame three codes i mean replace these research question with uh, with one word or with few words motivator barrier reaction reena is writing reason of motivation frustration reaction barrier two barrier and anuradha fear of getting infection adverse reaction motivation motivation barrier and reaction punima motivation barrier and reaction okay so most of you are writing motivation frustration okay done good very good so yes those initial codes like i will also code it like maybe in this case i may put it like motivators or motivation second was maybe it, it may be barrier and then how reacted as reactions so now uh, your code book so the codes the list of codes which you form it is known as the code book and in uh, qda minor light you have got a code window so you have all list of that code in that code window so that aggregation of codes is known as the code book and in many research you must have read that there were two coders so in your manuscript also you can decide to have a collaborative coding means two person can do the coding obviously on separate files and then you can merge the codes and you can discuss about the themes so your code book your code book should include the name of the code the description of the code if possible and an example of what to include the code like in this case motivation and frustration needs to be defined now what do we mean by uh, emerging of a code so suppose you plan to study the perception of people about cleaning of the cleanliness of the public hospital and we have decided two codes like satisfactory and unsatisfactory so i have conducted in depth interview of visitors and after transcription i have started with the process <laughs> process of coding so during the process of coding i find that the new codes are emerging uh, which were which initially i did not imagine so that's how the new codes when they appear you will come to know when you start doing the data analysis that's why it is said that you should read your transcript 
many times. So you read all the transcript thoroughly before you begin the coding process. And the main thing you, you, you can have a notebook and you can So uh, you should read, uh, you should read all the transcript repeatedly. At least we we say it three to four times. Even all the standard books, it says that you should read the transcript three to four times before you start coding process. So now you don't have to use all the codes that you have created in the previous step. That's why we call it as to keep the research question in front of your eyes. It will happen that initially you have coded 250 codes, but when you start uh, making connections between codes, there will be many codes who will be left unattended or who will be left as such. It is not necessary that you should include all codes in your data analysis. So there are many, there, there is a possibility like in our case also initially there were like 375 codes. So we have reduced them and actually we have reduced them to like 175 and 200 codes. And we have left the other codes because they were not fitting into the, the manuscript or into the research question. So it is not necessary that all the codes should be included in the data analysis, but, but you should be breaking it. You should be having a, okay, Ashwini. Okay, I'm sorry, today there was no break now. So do you want uh, the break now? Okay, we, we, we may have because, okay, then we will have a break of five minutes. Sorry, you should have reminded me earlier. I was going in a flow and today because there was no breakout room also till this time. So I, I, I it is too much for you people. I'm sorry. And you make me remind me if I, for, if I forget, please uh, remind me. Okay, so now there's a five minute break. And sorry. <laughs> you have created and generally you use 50 to 75 percent of the codes which you have created in the initial cycle so you have to decide that which codes are important with respect to your research question and then you have to create categories by bringing two or more codes together and we'll see how to create a category so you have to be very open-minded while we are creating a category and once we have put two or more codes together, then we call it as a, in the form of a category. And this, then this, this is known as the open coding, the first process. The second process, when you try to find out the relationship between the codes, then we call it as a axial coding. And when you have one predominant code, then we call it as a selective coding. In the process of coding, you have to decide about the hierarchy also. So you have to see that if there are two or three or four categories, then which category, well, when you will uh, make a flow diagram, you have to think regarding that which category should come first, followed by the second and followed by the third. If you are trying to establish a linkage between the category, we'll see in one of the article, how they have made a, you know, uh, uh, we call, in the end, we there is a function of mapping also, mind map. So that mind map uses such linkages regarding the hierarchy of the category. So it comes automatically when you click that option and it, it, it's a very beautiful pictorial representation of all the categories. And then you have to draw a figure to summarize your result. Suppose you did coding of five transcript and you have made a code like this, like the first code was the hospital staff misbehaved the second code was staff shouted, staff not listen, and I was not given due attention by the staff. So if you have to, uh, do you think that all these codes can be uh, merged together and can be labeled it something? And if yes, then what will be that? If there is no, then there is no question of answering. If you think the yes, then what should be that uh, one code? Jennifer is writing yes. So what can be that? Staff misbehavior, very right. Behavior of staff can be there. It is it is broad category. Behavior of staff is broad because there may be a, a person who will say that his experience was good. In that case, you can have a staff behavior as a broad and then you can uh, divide again into, into the good and bad. 
so depend depends on the type of responses which you are getting now if you if perk this there was a if the the research question is like like have you experienced workplace harassment in that case if i ask like in answer to or in response to the workplace harassment what did you do so if one person answered i did not know it would hurt her it was one of the person so code is not aware then second person says that i wasn't myself that day the code is not in myself and the third person says it's not my fault she made me angry so in the, the if the research question is perception of workplace harassment and uh, in answer to that if the people are answering like that then what will you do so the category will be justification for wrong doing in this case because the person is saying that i did not know it would hurt and i wasn't myself that day and it is not my fault she made it uh, she made me angry so category if i i have to categorize it into the one word then what can i say that it is the justification for wrong doing again this is making a category is also a, a subjective experience and you may take expert opinion once you have grouped the codes so two investigator first it is good if two people discuss and do it together if you are the only one then you can do it on your own and then you can take help of from your senior or from a person or there are consultants also who provide uh, the such consultancy but uh, yes even if you discuss with because qualitative is not something it's just the relationship and you no know, understanding those words so you can discuss it with your colleague and then you can have a uh, come to a page or come to a consensus so like you make your plate in such a way that the items remain in this case what what are you seeing yes can anyone unmute and answer kavita in this plate what can you see different dishes mixed food yes ma'am different dishes Platter. and uh, but i am not able to mark the uh, periphery of each dish so uh, everything yes. seems to be um, touched with each other okay it is not exactly mixed also yeah distinction uh, that border is merged but in spite of that you can make the clear uh, items like uh, I, I'm, i'm we are not naming the items but you can see there are five six items so it uh, without losing its identity because it's it's not mixed so they are in the plate without uh, losing it at uh, the identity and that's how we call it as a lunch or a dinner plate so this is something like you make a uh you know merged uh, codes to make a category now there is another term which we call as the shop talking now the researcher even the saldana and creswell they recommend to do a shop talking throughout the study the shop talking means that you have to talk regularly with your trusted peer with your colleague and or advisor regarding your study because The, they you are talking your mind you are explaining them your mind and they may ask some provocative questions which you have not even thought of which you have not considered so the you know the because qualitative analysis you are doing keeping mum you are not articulating with someone you are not talking with someone so verbal articulation with another person about what's going on in your data about what's going on in your mind it helps to synthesize your understanding it helps to understand it will make your understanding better that's why it is always recommended that you should keep talking to one or the i mean maybe one person if she is your friend or he is your friend or maybe senior who has experience or even if there is no one you can identify someone in your home also and keep talking about your research to the person because they may ask something which you have not thought of it will give you some idea and while you are articulating your thoughts things may become clear to you as well so this uh, action it is known as the shop talking and you should be doing it while you are carrying out a analysis on the qualitative research now there is a coding framework so this you have discussed so now uh, we will discuss few uh, concepts regarding the grounded theory approach so in grounded theory approach 
we have uh, read that there are three types of coding process. There is an open coding process, there is an Excel coding process, and there is a selective coding process. So the type of coding which you have read, like the all the types of coding where you are going open. So you are uh, in the process of breaking that uh, uh, splitting type of coding. That is uh, the type of is the is the open coding. Now Excel coding, what you do, you make connections between those categories. Because in the open coding, what you have done, you have made a category out of that open code which you have created in the first cycle. In the Excel coding, you try to make connections between the categories, which is called as the Excel coding. And in selective coding, what you do, if, in which that one, you select one core category out of that Excel coding, and then you make it into a predominant a theme. So that is known as the selective coding. Ma'am, can you give example, ma'am? For... Yes, I'm giving you, uh, just these are the examples only. So like I have collected data and I have made transcripts. So these are the three transcripts. I have begun with the process of open coding and I have generated codes from the scratch. So now the, I will, uh, I'm practicing this uh, theoretical sampling. So I have got a set of old data. Now I have interviewed more people and I've got a set of new data. So I have made more new codes and I'm comparing it with the previously developed code. So now I have got this few codes. So now uh, imagine each color as a unique code. This you can see there, this is a light green. This is a, these are the shades of just, we have tried to show it with the colors initially. So like this is the various shape. This is the orange, this is blue, green, again, blue, and this is yellow. So now we have grouped these of nearly same text, the same shades. So these three, you can imagine it as a, same shade. Similarly, these peach, orange, and this uh, yellow of same shades, and then these are the shades of green. So here we have tried to form a category. So this was the open codes. Based on that, I have framed a category. And now I'm trying to establish connections between the codes to bring them together. And then again, I did more sampling, few more codes have come up. And I will continue till the process of saturation is made out. So I will do a selective coding and by connecting all codes and theme together, I have made a core category. So I have made this, I have taken this as a predominant one. I have taken this as a predominant one. I have taken this as a predominant one. And then I may label it a name for this new mixture of color. And this selection, selecting a name, it is the most challenging because you have taken the predominant category from the three and you have make connections between the three. Now you have to give a name of this. So basically these three, it is known as the selective coding. So like in, this is easy for you to know that we all have done this mixing of color. Like you know that red and yellow makes orange, blue and yellow makes green, blue and pink makes purple. So similarly, but giving new name to a combination is always a challenge because color, it is easy. You know, by mixing two color, it will make the three third new color. But for if you are mixing the codes or category, obviously it is a challenge. And that's how they are thinking process your dictionary use of dictionary and new words. It has got a role. In this case, regarding this example, you can see that there is an example of rage, bitter, then again, fed up, glad, these are all examples of emotions, joyful, loving, upset, weeping, moan. So maybe all these three you can have in the form of anger, the glad, joyful, loving in the form of happiness, and the upset, weeping, and moan in the form of sadness. So all these will form the emotions. So now uh, before this, uh, regarding that exact example, we, we are sharing a uh, article with you today regarding that uh, mind framework and do read that article then you will understand the relationship of that Excel and uh, open coding and selective coding and uh, then uh, this is one narrative so can anyone uh, read Mugdha can you read this yes ma'am <clears throat> the closer I get to retirement age 
the faster I want it to happen. I'm not even 55 yet and I would give anything to retire now. But there's a mortgage to pay off and still a lot more to, uh, to sock away in savings before I can even think of it. I keep playing the lottery, though, in hopes of dreams of early uh, winning those millions. No retirement luck yet. Okay, thank you, Mugdha. So in this case, can you uh, extract some codes? Any type of code which you have read. You have read, you have read all the seven types of coding? So like you can do the attribute coding, you can do emotional coding, en vivo coding, descriptive coding, magnitude coding, attribute is 55, okay? Descriptive retirement, good. Mortgage to pay off process, playing lottery, Yes, very good, Bhavna. Retirement debt, hope. Hope, yes. Hope is, again, emotional coding. Playing lottery, process coding. Early winning. What is early winning? Hopes of dream. Early winning is magnitude coding. Early, late, more, less. So early winning is magnitude coding. No retirement luck yet. No is again magnitude coding. Okay, there is a mortgage to pay off and still a lot more to sock away in saving. Again, still a lot more to sock away. This is also a type of, you can have a descriptive coding, uh, sorry, or you can have an emotional coding also. Unlucky yet hopeful, yes. Emotional coding, hopes or dreams, emotional coding. So yes, so now I think you know the all the types of coding. And then vivo coding is easiest because you code the sentence only. Now coming to the Kavita is writing attribute, descriptive, retirement, process, saving, and playing lottery. Yes, good. Coming to the narrative analysis. So narrative, you have done that... Uh, body image uh, study also you have gone through that and in the uh, first session also we have read about the narrative analysis narrative research method that you listen to the story of the individual and the researcher and the individual they co-construct co and there also i have given this example of badla when the both of them they uh, co-constructed the story of that um, murder or death which happened that night so in the narrative transcript, you will see that you break the transcript into pieces. Like in this case, the stories are written, but you have to break it into pieces because once you, when the person is saying, he has not arranged it sequentially. So it is a narrative interview. And then again, you break it into pieces. And then you, these acts are this block act as a code. So this narrative block, because the person is telling one story, then the person is telling another story and you have to connect these blocks in a sequential uh, manner to develop a core. So this core narrative is a generalized narrative grounded in the stories of the participants. Like in this case, there is a narrative analysis of the child bearing experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is, this is narrative analysis, why? Because this is the story of maybe one or more uh, few individual, few uh, women who uh, suffered from this uh, childbearing experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. So you can see they have uh, the themes identified or like sense of loss, hospital experience, and there's an expert, like as soon we walk from the garage to the door of the hospital, we were greeted with a nurse covered with the head to toe in a protective gear. They stop us to take our temperature, check our eyes to tell us to go to the next station. And then the theme description and these quotes were like sense of loss, hospital experience. This is uh, just 
this the aim of these slides is to show how you can represent your result when you perform such analysis so you can write theme and sub theme you can write the description and then followed by the quotes to support your theme again a complexity of choice after prior cesarean section here also you will see that the findings are presented in four broad categories so narrative analysis also they make category out of that narratives this is narrative analysis of a single case which you have read so narrative analysis can be done for a single case or from a multiple case so these are the steps for narrative analysis you read the transcript you begin with the inductive type of analysis and then again like i have shown you break up those transcript by stories and then compare the stories of the research participant so there are some words like actions activities differences opinion concepts and process now describe these categories and how they are connected and use a neutral voice voice for this so now this activity i'll just skip because we have done enough activity now i'll show you analytical memo what is analytical memo so basically analytical memo is everything whatever is coming to your brain what is if you are going through the transcript so you should be continuously document your thought process and this process is very important so what you should write in memo so you write your memo you uh, date wise means you are forming the transcript also and then you observed uh, whatever you observed was it expected or not based on the literature review then have you observed anything surprising please write it if there is a aha moment while doing the transcript you are feeling very happy or very good uh, that something uh, is something came to your mind very unique experience you should write then and there did you observe any emerging pattern in your transcript also you should write have you observed anything which is contradicting the other thing like i said that there there was there may be one person whose views are different from the other people so this uh, those contradictions you have to write in the transcript so the, this analytical memo will help you in drafting of the transcript because analytical memo you write that you it helps you in the discussion when you write the discussion these analytical memo because in discussion it is basically what you found out and how you interpret it so your analytical memo help you to write the discussion or did you feel any problem related to transcript during the analysis or any new possibility so analytical memo can be compared to blogs and it is a place it is a place where you dump your brain about a particular phenomena so it is basically a reflection or a note to self and that's why coding an analytical memo should be concurrent and this is just to show that you are the in charge of your own code and coding process that perseverance and all those things that is important and because you think if you can code alone that is okay but if you do two people if you code it together then the, the outcome is good again coding is a very, very slow process and memos help you to track your thoughts over time and it is a record of how you build a theory from your data so you should take break in between in the coding process like we missed the break uh, and uh, you people have reminded me but in the coding process also take few breaks in between so your memos uh, is the first draft or final report and bus first draft need not to be always perfect even uh, it is just saying that even the no nobel laureate write crappy first draft and then they revise those crappy draft and turn into the masterpieces so this is coding by theme i'm just skipping this now what is saturation so saturation is like uh, just to example uh, in the day, day before yesterday also we were discussing how to know about a saturation so just to give an analogy like you have read an interesting news in your local newspaper and then you wish to know further about it so what you do you proceed like this so you see one news uh, channel which is you you read one national newspaper english then you see the national news channel which is in english then you see another news channel then you read some blogs 
then you see another news channel and then again you read newspaper you read some magazine again you read some newspaper app about that same news and then again hindi magazine after so many activity you will find that same thing is coming everywhere so this is known as the saturation now some frequently asked questions should i limit my course only to interview questions please answer yes or no no answer will be no because the analytical memo also gets coded so that's why answer will be no can one code have multiple quotation in single interview yes good can one code have multiple quotation from different interview yes now coming to themes in qualitative data so themes are often used interchangeably saldana says and many author they use this term theme interchangeably with the category with the domain with the phrase and what gets theme means in your category what theme you should pick up so theme is when there is some repetition of ideas some metaphor or analogies some sociological concepts or if there are some tensions or worries in the data that should be themed like there are few questions which you should ask to decide for the theme so researchers should look for the troubles like what worries or concern the participants are expressing what unresolved issues are the participants raising what do the participants find surprising or disturbing what were the types of tensions or conflict or what kind of trouble are participants in such questions answer to the such questions usually gets themed so you should have a theme relating to these questions any problem in your data that any trouble in your data any trouble in the response that should be themed 